Well, good afternoon. My name is uh, Gary Newton. I've been the uh, FSAE noise captain for a uh, better part of two decades now, going on another uh, another year next year in 2021. Looking forward to another time out there on the field with uh, with you guys. But this year we're going to take a a new approach here with the noise of test, and I'd like to introduce it to you uh, simply because I think we're going to have a brain dump, right? As some of the teams lost this opportunity to transition from the the more experienced students to the new students. I'd like to give you an opportunity to walk through the noise test as it is conducted on the site. And then we'll go ahead and walk through the noise test, the new virtual concept that we put together, which will allow all teams an opportunity to participate. We've created a, a virtual noise test that uh, is open to all teams to participate in for 2021. We ran a trial this year in 2020. Uh, we got a few responses. We'd like to have gotten a few more, but uh, we think this could give us a real opportunity in the future to, to really enhance um, the noise test and give greater understanding and awareness uh, for acoustics in the engineering process overall. The first thing I'd like to do is have a quick level set and that basically introduce you to the noise test that we do. Every year it goes without being said, some student shows up and always says, this is a racing event. Why do we need a noise test? Well, yes, we have to have a noise test because per performance and noise really go hand in hand in the larger engineering community, right? We understand that this is a race event. We're not trying to make this a core noise and vibration experience um, or competition. But we have to recognize that in automotive engineering, noise and vibration are critical to the performance of the vehicle. So there has to be some understanding of that. Also, we really need to protect our volunteers, the employees and the spectators that are all engaged in FSAE. We can't have cars, you know, 10 at a time running around the track at 130, 140 dB. There's just no way to really um, enjoy that type of environment in the type of proximity that we are to the vehicles. Also, by using noise, it gives us an opportunity to really understand some of the engineering efforts that went into the vehicle and understand some of the ups and downs that we could find when we go through the noise test and then the, the, the iterations for those teams that failed, right? We really can evaluate if the efforts being put forth are, are making a difference. Also, safety is a big thing. You know, we talked about protecting hearing, but if people can't communicate to you in the car, people can't communicate to you uh, while in the paddocks area warming up, then really we have another problem there. So uh, the safety of the volunteers and the safety of, of yourself as drivers too are also critical. And then finally, really to measure the compliance of the engine, right? These engines have uh, published specs there are things that kids do with them, the students do with them. So the noise test also gives us a, an opportunity to make sure that nothing is totally out of whack. And what I mean by that is we all know what a good engine sounds like and a bad engine sounds like. You know, we can pick up pretty quick, something's going wrong. So by using this noise test, we can also identify uh, potential issues that might also be uh, going on with that engine. The other question we get is why do we use this half meter away at, at uh, 45 degrees. What, what's the purpose behind that test? Well, really this is a, a, a well accepted test in industry and a well accepted in, uh, test across automotive in general. It's also part of the SAE and ISO standard sets and the protocols that they call out for how this test should be done. And really what we're doing by using this uh, approach, we're assuming and we're treating the exhaust uh, the exhaust source as a point source. And really when you think about the engines, the way that they're operating or the way the vehicles are operating, the exhaust is really the dominant source. So by treating it as a point source, um, we're not gonna get too deep into the theory here, but basically we're assuming equal radiation in all directions from that exhaust. So the mi mi microphone being out of flow is simply to to prevent that, that pressure direct on the microphone. So that 45 degree angle is simply to get you out of the flow of the exhaust outlet.
but really it takes into account that the uh, the noise is emanating or radiating in all directions. And along with that, we also assume a free field. And what that means is we don't have something bouncing back to us. So we don't have large barriers. We're not testing next to a concrete wall. Um, we don't put a bunch of uh, things around the vehicle to shield it. We're assuming that the noise radiates equally and then it dissipates over, over area, over distance, over time. So we're not dealing with reverberation and we're not dealing with, um, uh, with reflection. Now, uh, one other point that's often brought up is, well, what about the ground? You know, what about the environmental effects that are going on? And I'd be lying to you if I said that there's no way to account for those. But when you're talking about 140 teams and you're talking about multiple tests, when you're talking about constantly changing factors and noise and, and in the environment around us, there's no way to level set for every single condition and every single team at every single point in time. So we don't take into account, you know, wind, speed, pressure, temperature, ground effects. You know, there are small variables, there are small um, calculations that can be made to assume for those things or to account for those things. But really at the end of the day, to make the competition even for everybody, the number is the number. So if you put your exhaust next to the ground or if you put it three feet high, the point is the number is gonna be the number and we're not running multiple iterations and multiple calculations to account for every single variable in the test. So I wanted to have that quick level set so that we can maybe set aside some of the misnomers that you know goes on with the noise test overall. And you know we wanna be as fair and as equitable as possible in going through this. And this is really the best way that we found, um, found to do it. So let's talk about the physical test when it's done on site. So this is the test we're all typically familiar with. The vehicles typically come out of the tilt area. They go directly into the noise area. And you can see by the map there on the left, on the right hand side, um, they go into a, a, a bay, they go into a bunch of queues and the vehicles at that point are warmed up. Uh, the vehicles are at that point made ready. And this is where the teams are now signaling to the event judges that, that they're ready to go. So when you're ready to go, the vehicle is pushed forward into the noise test area. Please don't drive the car. We, we have had on occasions, cars put in a gear and the, the driver kind of coasted up there. Uh, think about it this way, you haven't tested your brakes yet. And this is really the first time in the competition the vehicle's turned on, apart from what you might do in your paddock. So, Without the brake test and without that other, uh, those other certifications, we are asking you and we're begging you, please push that car forward. Don't put it into gear and drive it up. Once the car is positioned in between the cones and once the car is in place, then basically the test is ready to go. The microphone is positioned and the meter is then read. In the past, we've had a, a wireless setup so that the teams could also see the numbers and we could get as many people away from the vehicle as possible. So what makes this efficient and what makes this go is really to have your tech sheet ready with your engine type on it, to have the bore and stroke logged and know that if you do have two exhausts, both of them will be measured. And the reason that we do that is just to make sure that everything is equal, but also to make sure that there's no games being played with, with flow or pressure through the exhaust systems. So we make sure both of them are, are, are measured. The loudest one will dictate the result for your pass or fail. The biggest thing we run into and what creates some of the, the, the delays and noise are getting the tax ready. You have to show us a number. And I don't care if it's a number on the display, if it's a number on a computer, on an iPad, doesn't matter, but you have to show me a number. You can't use lights and you can't use needle positions. We need to see a number to make sure that we hit the RPMs that need to be done. So anything that you can do, anything your team can do to make that as easy and as seamless as possible will get you in and out of noise as fast as possible. And let's not forget, there's a whole lot of competition that goes on other than noise. So we wanna get you in, past, and out, and on your way. 
here's how the test is typically set up once you're, you're in the noise test area. The microphone is positioned up to 45 degrees from the outlet. And we say up to because of the different packaging and the different uh, configurations that the teams present to us year on year, we gave ourselves that leeway so that we could avoid having a team to have to remove a tire. We could avoid some suspension linkage or some control arms. We could move that microphone anywhere along that plane 45 degrees to get the measurement that we need. And again, remember, we're assuming a point source, so we're assuming equal radiation, and really our goal is to get out of the flow. From the side view, you can see that the microphone is placed at level with the exhaust outlet. So whether that's high or whether that's low, the microphone is positioned to be equal to the exhaust outlet level. And I took a little snippet there from the rules that shows that the microphone will be positioned at an angle up to 45 degrees. The other thing that is often you know, misunderstood is that it has to be unobstructed. So that's why we first went with the up to 45 degrees to allow us to potentially remove that. But you can't have a tire, you can't have a side pod, you can't have something blocking the exhaust outlet and the microphone. You can't put an artificial barrier between that. So there are some cases where we do have to have teams either remove their side pods or remove their tires and put it on jack stand to give us the optimum position to give you the optimum position and to make sure that the microphone is unobstructed. We do that for every single team so that everybody is competing under the exact same set of rules, whether it's Thursday morning, the first test, or Friday night, the last test. The consistency of the application of the rule is critical to not only the fairness, but the success of all the teams throughout the competition. Now here's the noise test levels. There are two tests that are run inside of the noise area. The first one is an idle test. The vehicle is pushed into the spot, it is positioned, the microphone is positioned, and the vehicle at, at, at a level flat idle has to be under 103 dBC. It can't be over that. If it is over that, you have to push out of the space and work on it and get back in the queue. You cannot test the three quarter RPM until you have successfully passed the idle test. The one thing about noise that you'll notice is that everything in this progression is serial, unfortunately. But in order to maintain consistency and to make sure there's no shenanigans, everything is done in that serial profile to make sure that it's consistent. So the idle test is 103 dBC. If you are successful in being under that number, then you typically kick it right up to the three quarters RPM. That number is 110 dBC. Those two numbers are fixed. The judges at their discretion have a half a dB of uncertainty that they can play with. So I talked earlier that we're not accounting for ground effects or we're not accounting for environmental factors. So the judges therefore have that half a dB. Now I will conform, confirm for you that the microphones are all class one. They all do qualify to you know, the measurement conditions that we need to have. And they are all calibrated both professionally before the event and periodically checked while on site. So we are bringing our A game to the noise test to make sure that there's not an issue in the meter and there's not a problem on our side. We, we typically, we want to identify the issues for you and we wanna make sure it's consistent. Now, the other way that we go about doing that is we use the published SAE test specs. On the SAE website, the student portal, you will find a link to the published SAE noise test engine speeds. Your engine should be listed along the, the left-hand side. You simply follow the column across and it gives you both your actual and rounded numbers. We're using the rounded numbers for the nearest 500. If your engine is not on that list, that's why we ask for the bore and stroke, because you can see that there is a calculation here for the bore and stroke, where if we don't have your engine type, we can come up with an answer for you. 
And that also allows us to keep the competition moving. Yeah, we've all been there when it's hot. We've all been there when it's cold. And the one thing we really want to have is just have that line keep moving. So anything you can do there to make sure your born stroke is identified, to make sure that your engine is labeled, is critical to keeping us on task. So now that we know the process, now that we know the microphone positions and the setup, and now that we know the levels and test speeds, let's talk about a few things your team can do to make you be successful. I've harped on this a little bit, but it really comes down to keeping yourself and keeping your team organized. Knowing where your tech sheet is. This is an ongoing issue year after year. We get the car positioned, you got five minutes to get to presentation, you wanna run noise, and the guy at the paddock has the tech sheet. Well, sorry, it's gotta be with the car, it's gotta be able to be logged, it's gotta be able to be noted. So make sure you know where your tech sheet is and make sure that person that is inside the, the, the bay, inside the paddock noise area, has that tech sheet. So we're not running all over to get it. And on the top of that, make sure it is clearly written your engine type, your bore, and your stroke. The other thing that you could do is bring your spare tools, bring your, your laptop with an extension cord. We do have a generator down there. You know, bring your jack stands. Let's go through that, to, you know, as a team so that if there is an issue where you may have failed or you might not have passed, you can push off, make the quick uh, fix, change the muffler and get back into the competition as fast as possible. Have your stuff ready, have your stuff with you. Also teammates, you know, a lot of times I see the, the four guys inside the bay and nobody else is there to be found. So, you know, rally the team, have a plan for how you're gonna do it and, and make them responsible for having those tools, having that stuff and being able to move you through this competition uh, effectively. Also, please be aware of your schedule. We do everything we can to go in order of who arrives first, who arrives second, making sure that the teams are ready or then pulled into noise. But please don't show up and say, I got six minutes to get to, to design and I got to go in front of everybody. It, it, it doesn't look good for you and it really puts me in an awkward spot. So know what your schedule is, know what you got to do, know where you got to be, and try to plan accordingly when you arrive at the different uh, static tests. And then finally, one other thing you can do to help keep your team successful is have a plan B, have a plan C, right? If I fail noise, what do I do next? Do I go to another muffler? Do I change my engine cal? Have I done some preliminary work to know if I change this or cha change X or change Y? What does that mean? Have a plan B and plan C. I see way too many teams, you know, pull over to the repair area and they sit there for three hours. You know, it, there's probably a drive to the event. There could be some time virtually before things are going on. Get together and talk about what you could be doing and have some, some next steps that you could affect quickly. Because really once you're out of noise, the rest of the competition is open up for you, right? You, get, you got break, but then that's your practice. And that's when you start to get out into the dynamic events. I don't want to be the barrier to your team's success, but I do have a job to do. So have a plan B have a plan C ready to go, jot something down, you're going to be okay. Some common facts that we run into, you know, I know the level is high. I, I know that we were over, but, and this is, this is the world famous, but, you know, the generator was running, that car was revving up, we were standing over there, the wind kicked up. Can we test again? Well, look, if there's no line, we'll test you again. But we're also not taking into account all those other factors. I talked about environmentals. I talked about the fact that we got a half a dB and we are constantly monitoring. I, I usually have two meters on site. We've got a 10 dB, noise, 10 dB difference between whatever else is going on environmentally and whatever we're testing for you. So we are in the near field. We are looking at that point source. Really the generator running 200 feet away is not causing you to fail this test. So respect what the judges give you and understand that we've created an environment that is really looking at that as the sole noise source. So, you know, we, the excuses or, or the, 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 the pushing off of what else could be the factor, 
it was really kind of fall on deaf ears with us, with all due respect. The other question I get usually is, why are we using DBC? Why don't we use DBA? Well, that's, that is a really good question. Um, about five years ago, we decided to go to the DBC scale because we saw an increase in the number of single cylinder engines. And the single cylinder engines got a huge advantage by the low frequency roll off of the A-weighted curve. So we feel the C-weighted curve gives a more representative test for all of the engines in the competition and doesn't give unfair advantage to one over the other. Um, number three is, do I have to take the tire, the side pod, the, the X, Y, or Z, do I have to take that off the car? Yes, you do. And we explain that the reason we do that is to make sure that there is no barrier. So let's make sure that we, uh, we remove those things to keep consistency in the test. Hopefully we're not asking you to de destroy the entire car, or de deconstruct the entire car, but taking on a side pot or popping a tire on and off should not be a, a life-changing experience for you. Um, also teams point out the microphone is not exactly at 45 degrees. Well, we walked through that. The, the rules say up to 45 degrees and we do what we can to optimize. Um, the other one is our engine doesn't go that high. Right, Our engine RPM is only this because of a rev limiter or because of this change that we made. Well, look, that's fine and I, I appreciate that. However, if you don't come with a note from tech that says you are allowed to run at a different engine speed and you get to noise, we are expecting that engine to run at the published test speed. So your options are to run it at the test speed or get approval from tech. Those are, those are the only two things. Without those, we're running that engine. So you need to turn off your rev limiters, you need to change your fuel map, you need to do what you need to do to get that engine to the published speed, or else you gotta go back and have a conversation with the boys in tech and figure out how to, how to finagle from them an exemption. Without that, we are testing at the test speed, and that is the same for everybody in the competition. I talked about the competition being serial, uh, so no, if you fail noise, you cannot go to break or practice. You have to pass noise before you can take the next step. You go to fuel, you go to tilt, you go to noise. And after noise, you can then get into the dynamic events uh, through break, right? Are you open on Saturday? Will you stay late? You know, when can I get tested? You know, I think those of you that are on this call and that have been in competitions before, I think if you're being really honest, you know that we've been pretty generous with our time. I have come on Saturday. We have been there before. I just want to share with you that there are published times in SAE's handbook for the students on when noise was be open. Anything beyond those times is considered a courtesy and anything beyond those times is not, you know, cannot be guaranteed. You know, we all do have other obligations and other lives, and some of us are also involved in other parts of the competition. So, you know, we do ramp things up. You know, I'm usually pretty early on Thursday. I've stayed pretty late on Friday, but you should not expect anything after the published times for noise to be tested. And no, you should not expect them on Saturday, except, except we do at times provide the meters for spot checks. Remember, at any time, an official at another event can pull your sticker and make you have to go back to noise if they think um, you're A, exceeding the level, or B, if you've done some uh, engineering to the car after you received your stickers. So that threat is always there, and that option is always there. So the meters are available on Saturday, but they are not available for noise test certification. They're available for vehicles to be recertified once they've lost their sticker. So those are some questions. I encourage you to send me some notes or to feel free to use the polls or the chat in here to, to send me some more you might want to have answers to. And uh, I'll go ahead and post those on the student forum uh, in the next couple of days. Now, new for this year, and I really want to share this with all the teams, um, new for this year is we've created a virtual noise test. This has never been done before. And I'm really proud of the collaboration that we've had with GT Power, with HBK, which some of you might know of Grueling Care, and with the company where I am now called VI Grade. And the primary question we wanted to ask ourselves is, is there a way to help the teams get a better handle on their noise 
and improve passing and throughput at the noise station on the day of the competition. So we've created a pre-event option for you. And what that option does is allows you to submit your simulation data to the FSAE student portal or the event portal, and that we will pull that down, run that through a process, and give you not only back an answer, but a calibrated wave file of what your exhaust would sound like. This is really, really cool, and this should give a lot of teams an opportunity to get up front and remove the surprise that often comes with noise. Now, how do we go about doing this? The, we, when I say we, VI Grade and HBK are not charging teams for this service. If a team has GT Power, who is a sponsor of FSAE, I believe it's a, a relatively very inexpensive license, a majority of the teams are already using it, so that's why we went with the, that direction. If you have GT Power and you can export to us the Q source, the time history from the simulation data, we will take that into our NVH simulator and couple that with a uh, transfer function. And that transfer function is uh, based on an already understood and well accepted, uh, well accepted uh, calculation. From that, we will do analysis that will give you the virtual sound test results, which is what your sound is a half a meter from the exhaust outlet at 45 degrees. We can actually get that number out and we've ran a beta, we've proved it. So that process can be executed and that we can provide that with a calibrated wave file that will come out of the simulator. Now we need two Q sources. We need one at idle and we need one at uh, three quarters RPM. And once you send those, we'll go through the process. Now, some of you are asking, wow, that's really cool. I, I wanna do that. Well, it was announced this year that it was open. We had some students, uh, some teams respond. Uh, we would have liked to have gotten more. So we're considering opening it up again, but those dates aren't defined yet. Uh, Kaylee and SAE will send out a note um, if we decide that we can do that again this year uh, for the teams. But the thought is, is that January, February of next year, we'll open up the portal for a couple of weeks, allow teams to submit their simulations. We will download those, process those, and send the results back through the, back through the portal so that teams can get a gauge on where they are virtually with noise. And then when they actually get the vehicle operational and they get the vehicle running, they should be able to validate and correlate the virtual test with the actual physical test. Now, if you're interested in getting involved in this, or if you're interested in learning more of the details about how we've gone about doing this, you can find everything in the virtual noise test event as published in the uh, FSAE virtual handbook from um, April of this year. It is posted, it is online. The one thing I wanna be very clear about is your participation in this event, the virtual noise event, there are no points, there are no disqualifications. So there's nothing you could submit to us that will impact or, or de uh, degrade your final score. This is simply a, an option to A, get engaged with simulation as we do typically in the automotive space and B, get a little heads up on where you might be trending and where your team might be heading. So this is really, really groundbreaking and really, really interesting. And I wanna thank, um, again, uh, GT Power uh, and the team at HBK and VI Grade for really collaborating around how to make this happen uh, for the teams. So with that having been said, that sort of completes the, um, the uh, presentation that I had prepared for today. Uh, I'll hang around here a few more minutes, uh, I think uh, until 12.15 uh, to answer any questions. I think you have to submit them through the chat. I'll go ahead and open that up and uh, make myself available and I will do the unmute all. I think I can do unmute all and uh, you can answer me some questions. If anyone wants to raise their hand or ask questions, we can do it that way too.
Hello, Em. You had raised your hand and asked a question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Michael. I'm from the from the University of Michigan Dearborn. Uh, been on our formula team for four years now. Um, and about the noise test, so we've been to competition before, and I'm just wondering if there's like if we want to be able to try and test the noise performance of our vehicle once it's assembled, so test in real time for validation before we get to competition. If you could provide any guidelines or pointers on what sort of equipment to use, or, or is there a preferred choice of microphone or testing arrangement or anything like that? Yeah, uh, that's an excellent question, Michael. Uh, thank you for raising it. Uh, look, I, I don't want to be a commercial, right? I, full disclosure, I worked for Brulin Care for 27 years, and now I work for VI Grade, which is related to, to Brulin Care. So basically what you're looking for in your instrumentation is a type one level meter, uh, type one sound level meter, excuse me. You're looking for a free field microphone, and you're looking for uh, something with a pretty wide dynamic range, because what happens is, a lot of these exhaust systems, you know, they bump up over 100, 110 dB, and you're bumping into the headroom of the, uh, of the sound level meter or the, or the DSP of the sound level meter. So you wanna make sure you've got a wide dynamic range, something that can go up to 140, 150 dB. Uh, you're also looking for a free field microphone because we assume a free field. So we, we don't want anything that uh, creates an incidence issue based on the position of the microphone. And, uh, and really, if you have those couple of things, you're good to go. You can, you can buy them from uh, Brewing Care, you can buy them from Scantech, you can buy them from Larson Davis and PCB. Um, I often have the students come up with the Radio Shack meters that they, they got for, for 10, 12 bucks. And uh, there's some pros and cons there. The pros are they're very cheap, the cons are they're unreliable. So, uh, but if you're looking for a, a simple point of reference, maybe that's good enough for you. But um, I hope that answers your question and gives you some guidance as to some things you should be looking for. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Yes, sir. I'm uh, looking through the attendees here to see if there's any more hands raised or any more questions. Hi, I do have another question actually while I'm thinking of it, if I may. Sure, go ahead, Michael. So I was just wondering, I don't, this information might be available somewhere else and I haven't seen it yet, but is there a way to be able to uh, download this presentation with the audio for later viewing and review with other people on the team? Uh, I do, I am recording the, co the presentation and I'll leave that to FSAE to distribute. So um, I would suspect that at some point it'll be posted uh, on this virtual platform or through the student portal, um, but I'll leave that with uh, Kaylee and the uh, FSAE team to, to do. Understood, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. All right. All right, I see another hand up, okay. Uh, Tristan, I'm going to promote you here. So you're a panelist now. And then I should be able to come over and grab you there. Sorry, it appears we lost Tristan. Tristan, I'm sorry, you did raise your hand. Uh, we got an error that uh, you were using an older version of uh, Zoom. So I promoted you to panelist and then it, uh, it lost you there. So I apologize uh, for that. All right. 
Hi, hello there, Gary. Uh, hey, there you are, Tristan, thanks. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I was just wondering um, how we can get in contact with GPT Power um, for to get access to the software and if uh, other softwares can be used because uh, my team currently has Ricardo Wave. Ah, okay. Uh, you, know, you can do some noise simulations on there. So I was just wondering if uh, yeah. it's also possible to do it through Wave or if it has to be through GT Power. That's a, it's a really good question, Tristan. Um, so for GT Power, uh, again, I'm, I'm not trying to promote one or the other. It's just that's who we collaborated with because they're, they're a current sponsor of the event. Uh, so if you want to send me a note to the email on the screen, I'll get you connected to Jared Chromas of uh, GT Power. But in the meantime, Tristan, if you're interested in, in discussing how we could get something out of Ricardo Wave, I'm not opposed to taking a look or work looking at what you could give us to see if we might be able to run that through our same process. Okay, all right. All right, so feel free to send me a note. Let's make a connection and uh, we'll talk about what, we, what we're currently doing. We can go into some more detail with, um, uh, with my technical lead and then we can see if we can get something out of Ricardo Wave or if we wanna get you, or, or then you can contact uh, uh, GT Power. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and then, um, so once we provide the simulation data, um, Viagra and HBK will do the whole conversion process, right? We wouldn't have to do anything? That is correct. Yeah, we're, we're offering that as a service to the students. Uh, so we're not charging for it, uh, but we do have to keep it within certain time frames, right? We can't just do it every time, uh, every day of the year, right? So we keep it into a certain time frame. And then uh, everything's submitted in that window. And then after that window, by X date, you'll have all the results posted back. So yeah, we're going through that ourselves. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Hey, you're welcome. And if you do wanna take a look at the uh, FSAE virtual handbook, the entire process for how we're converting uh, is actually laid out. And I believe there's a couple formulas in there too for, uh, for those math guys that really wanna make sure we're doing this the right way. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. Welcome. Well then, look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, students, volunteers, uh, employees, interested parties, and members of the entourage, I um, I really appreciate your time today. I appreciate your attention. Um, please stay in touch with FSAE to see if this presentation is going to be posted on their site. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at the email posted there on the screen. I look forward to seeing you all in 2021 and um, doing whatever we can to give you some value out of the 2020 experience. Have a great day and good luck. Cheers.